uh, we will learn about LCA methodology. The first step in the LCA methodology is to define the goal and scope. It should include what, why, and whom. What means what you want to do in this study. What you want to do, what is it that you want to compare? What is it that you want to analyze? Whether this is a system, a product, or a service. Why do you want to do this LCA? Is it to analyze the environmental impact of the product or system? Or it is to compare the product impacts with other products for market purpose, for example? As it is very tempting to use the life cycle assessment as a greenwash to show that your product is much better than others. You want to in present your study. What are the intended audience? Or the company manager, public authorities, or the scientific community? You have to define all these in your goal and scope definition. It should also include the functional unit and then the system boundary. To do what your goal and scopes are, you start with an inventory analysis, which means that you start to collect all the data on energy and materials flow in the system for all the processes that are included in the system boundary of the system you are going to analyze. So now you have collected all the flows, energy and materials, and have used that to complete the inventory analysis, that is inputs and outputs. Output means the emissions to the air, water, and soil, to use that inventory for the impact assessment. There are several impact assessment methods, and in that, to do that impact assessment, you have to follow one of the impact assessment methods, such as Eco, eco Indicator 99. Here you classify all the emissions and then characterize them And in some cases, if the interpretation of the results are not good enough for the audience who are not, who are not well aware of the complexity of the environmental issues, there might be a need to go further with the weighting, a one-digit score. When you have done that, you need to interpret your results and sometimes it is important to look over to look over the study again and uh, all the dotted lines here symbolize that you might have to uh, adjust your goal and scope when you have started to see the whole picture. It might sometimes need to adjust your inventory analysis and interpretation in relation to the data quality and availability. So let's go in all these steps in details. Uh, here first, the goal and scope definition. In nutshells, you, as I said before, you need to define the aim of the study, functional unit, system boundary, and categories, methods of impact assessment, and the limitation of the studies. To be very precise about what you want to do, the most important part here is to define your functional unit. And your functional unit should represent the system function. For example, in case of goods transport, the functional unit could be carbon dioxide emissions per kg of transport good. Or in case of flooring, it may be megajoule of energy consumption per mega square meter of flowed lead, or in case of beverages, it could be the impacts or carbon dioxide emissions, for example, per 
liter of beverage so when it comes to the system boundary descriptions it should include technical temporal and geographical aspects technical means that what processes are included and what are excluded at what time the study is going to conduct and at what locations the results are valid for example if the production and consumption of a product is in sweden or within the eu then the results are valid within this geography as the conditions described these results cannot be valid for example us or for the china so when you know what you do and what your goal and scope you start with an inventory analysis which means in the inventory analysis you collect data and over all the energy inputs materials and then emissions to water soil and air or all the processes for example here in this case for all the processes in the in the in the system boundary you have to look at okay how much energy raw materials and other chemicals or catalyst are used to do that process and what is the focus product and what are the byproducts and how, what are the emissions to the air water and soil so for all the process you have to do this and in some cases for example you may might have to allocate the the the, the environmental burden um, to to two or more products for example in this case we see that there is a focus product and together with other byproducts how much you have to allocate or should allocate to buy products and how much it should go to the focus product is a complex that we can that we will cover in another video uh, but simple here is that in, in case of a process with multiple products you have to do an allocation in your inventory analysis calculations then you do your calculation and you have also to try to assess your data quality on your own in your analysis the next step is to do the environmental impact assessment that could be done in two different steps in the first step is classification where you classify all the inventory emissions into impact categories based on their type of impact for example in this case carbon dioxide methane and cfc they have the impact on the climate and at the same time cfc is also dangerous to the ozone depletion to the ozone so it also have impact on the ozone uh, layer so that is the factor of one so when you classify all the emissions inventory emissions into impact categories then you and in this process you use the classic characterization factors for example here i have as an as an example um, so when all this done so you get the single score for each impact category for example in case of climate change or global warming potential you have a single uh, digit score that is carbon dioxide equivalent and in case of ozone depletion that is cfc equivalent and the same as eutrophication and acidification so 
so but in some cases interpretation of uh, the impact to uh, in reference with the impact categories might not easy to understand for the audience and in that case you might have to go one step further that is waiting to create a single dimensional index for all the impacts of your system assessment has been developed for several reasons and the most useful thing is that for decision making for example in case of product design and development you look into what design of the product or best from the environmental impact point of view and what are the hotspots where the effort should go to develop the product design further and in materials purchasing life assessment can also help where you looked at what materials can be used in a product design and what and what are the environmental impacts of that are of those materials to make a better choice over purchasing and at the same times to meet the regulatory measures the other application could be learning or exploration of the product or pro production systems so in this case you do the life cycle assessment to just learn about how the system is uh, what are the system environmental impacts what type of impacts they are there and uh, what are the hotspots uh, to where the effort should go to improve the system overall environmental efficiency and the last one uh, or maybe not uh, the last one but uh, the most important one is also the market claim for example in case of EPD you develop the environmental product declaration to mar market the environmental efficiency of your product and uh, it, the LC could also be used for eco labeling which might not uh, be easy but in the next video I shall take you through the parts of inventory analysis and impact assessment especially the system boundary choices the locations and the impact assessment thank you very much for watching